For more stories like these, go to www.social-tv.co.za, subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on our social mediums. Today, we unpack the future of the office, and I have a chat to marketing manager of Workshop 17, Britta Dams. Workshop 17 is South Africa's top workspace solutions provider. We take a look at the old dated model of renting square meterage versus the new solution of physical and virtual. That's our social newscast with me, Sam Marshall. Britta, thank you very much for your time. Very important discussion to really talk about the uh, future of uh, what our workspaces will look like. Talk to me about kind of how you guys have thought about the future of office, that it's both physical and virtual. It's been interesting now with the lockdown in South Africa, how it kind of changed the office basically overnight. During level five, we were unable to open for any of our members or for ourselves, but during level four, Luckily, we were able to open um, and have the teams back in the spaces and have some essential businesses come back, but it hasn't really been the same. Um, where we used to cater previously, pre-COVID, if you can call it that, we used to cater for your small businesses, your individuals, and your entrepreneurs. That has fundamentally shifted within the last, I would say, about two months. A lot of corporates are starting to move out of their buildings. They're realizing now that people are just as effective working from home, working remotely. And a lot more people are realizing how important the work-life balance is. So things can change so quickly. We've had more corporates inquire and work on flexible options. Now, although not all of them are used to that or are even aware that you can work virtually, um, remotely, part-time, full-time, whatever suits you, Um, I think that our business development team and our teams on the ground have really come to the party with assisting these corporates in the transition. When a business like yours thinks of the future of the office, it obviously has to think of how do we reimagine that space? Because for me, as you said, a lot of corporates have discovered, well, in actual fact, if my team worked from home and I've put measures and structures in place, they can be quite productive. How do we... Pervert, do you ever see people going back into a physical office space um, in the same way? Obviously, there are essential businesses that need it, but there are a could be a growing minority that have seen the value of having this hybrid approach. Definitely, it's definitely been growing. I must say, working from home, as ideal as it sounds, it's not always that practical for everyone. Um, they don't have a an office in the home, they don't have a quiet space, there's kids with the schools now having holidays and then not holidays. Um, your pets can be annoying, your neighbors can be all over the place, somebody could be vacuuming. A lot of people need that quiet space. And I think what we've heard from a lot of our members who are starting to, to come back into the space now is that Workshop 17 allows them to focus. Even if they are working remotely, we still need a place to come in every now and then, whether you're having a strat session or a meeting or you just want reliable internet or there's load shedding at home and you don't have a UPS. We take care of all of that, whether you're a big team or a small team. Um, it's, really been, it's really been a big shift and people have started to embrace remote and especially flexible working now. We can work at home and come to the office when you need time to concentrate. Um, and just to meet to meet your colleagues, I think that that person to person connection is so important. I think for for any human. I've started to see that kind of advertising where people are talking about the human connection and how collaboration, even though from a technological perspective, is still happening via platforms like Zoom and Microsoft Teams and a host of the other platforms. That the human connection is still a key component to thriving. How have you guys managed to kind of shape your messaging around that? Hmm. Once we, I think once we went into lockdown, people thought, oh, amazing, I can start working from home now and I have that balance. But as our community managers started checking in with the members to see how we can assist, 
if there's anything that they need, how can we substantially help them? A lot of them have said we can actually not wait to get back into the office. So we do have networking events here. We have great partners um, like Heavy Chef who have who have their events hosted here, or even just um, virtual events now that people can start joining. That human connection is so, so crucial. And I think in some of our cases um, in Johannesburg, we've had some corporates join us as well, where they have their innovation department with us. It's so difficult to innovate in, in a building where you see the same people every day and kind of lose touch with, not with reality, but I must say definitely with trends. You want to be surrounded by people who can be your customers and, and sit next to them in a cafe or overhear a conversation and hear what their struggles are and how you can find a solution. That kind of connection and those kind of moments just can't be recreated at home. And I think Workshop 17 comes in there, and that's, that's exactly the service that we're trying to offer, and we try to bridge those connections and really get people to work together. Obviously, as a team, you've had to do a lot of scenario planning and business modeling around what your business looks like uh, in the future. You couldn't have, in January, predicted that a black swan moment like COVID-19 would fundamentally change the rules of the game in many ways. How do you, or what have you guys predicted in terms of just understanding the kind of working environment? Are we seeing that the traditional let me rent square meterage is going out of the window and that there's this kind of, as you call it, a third office uh, or a, a third space or uh, other words like a malleable office, something that you can manipulate to when you need it? Do you see that going to take up a bigger part of the market? In many ways, what Airbnb did for, for, for the hotel industry are you going to have to find that you're going to have to disrupt your own space? Yes, definitely. I think you hit the nail on the head right there. With our new spaces that we're planning on opening, we're looking at a, a new space in Rosebank, um, which was in January this year, before, as you call it, Black Swan came swooping down on us. Um, we were going to have four floors completely centered around our current, or our used to be current model, which was Jolly private offices, you have a couple of meeting rooms, you have a VC booth, there's a cafe, and then there's hot desking. That has completely changed, basically overnight. So where it used to be four floors, fully kicked out co-working space, we've actually transformed two of those floors now into what we call white block box plus, to which you also mentioned the manual workspaces. I think one of the reasons why corporates in the past haven't really looked at co-working spaces is also because that they're scared of losing their brand identity. And that's where the white box plus is perfect for that. You literally take a couple of square meters that you need in one of our spaces that has all like your, um, your HVAC, your electricity, your generators, all of that already there, but you take your brand identity your furniture, your people, um, your systems, and you plug that into the white box plus space so you don't have to get rid of anything that you used to have in the building. We've also found that in some of the bigger corporate buildings, um, where a corporate would take up an entire building, it's now standing empty. And one of our new models that we're also looking at is possibly partnering with those corporates and also reinventing their spaces to rent out to, to members or potential new clients. So we would be managing that space on their behalf. They would still use the floors that they used in the past or are using now post-COVID with people working from home. And then we'll take over the other floors in that building and generate a revenue. Like you mentioned, a lot of people are looking at the per square meter prices too. And co-working just is so much cheaper than that. People don't really necessarily take into account that they have HVAC and electricity and services, cleaning, parking, all of that is over and above your square meter rate that you're paying. Where with a workshop 17, everything is included and it actually works out a lot cheaper and you only pay for what you use. But, but you know, Britta, that you have competitors in this space and... I mean, whether you're going from 44 Stanley into Santon with your uh, well, WeWork um, competitors 
you guys are all playing in almost in the same game at the moment. And for somebody, price is going to be, well, price has always been important, but it's going to be more sticky now going forward. How do you become price competitive when the market, when somebody, a smaller, a smaller business can offer cheaper co-working space? How do you become competitive? Because price is ultimately going to be a decision maker for a CEO or a managing director to say, okay, if we're going to do this hybrid working model and we into this flexi offer space and we like this idea of this white box concept, it's going to have to be friendly to my pocket. Definitely. A lot of the other co-working spaces don't necessarily have the room for flexibility like we do. So with our white box plus, you're literally only paying for what you for what you use. We also have a very big footprint across South Africa, so in Cape Town and in Johannesburg. We feel that there's a need for for bigger private offices and we, we pride ourselves to be able to offer like I mentioned, the absolute ultimate flexibility. So we cater to what you need. You don't have to adapt to what we have available. We also have some great partners who have amazing buildings all over the country. So if you found that you want to have a new building somewhere else where we don't necessarily have a footprint, we're able to tap into that, which isn't always that easy or possible um, with other co-working spaces. So being flexible is definitely one of our one of our big um, strong points and then we offer local South African furniture which makes it really true and local to, to our brand and this excellent excellent service a lot of our um, members who have joined us now have been to other locations and they've just mentioned that the service that we offer here is just so much better that they feel more at home 